substandards the substandards has been classified in the four different categories primary secondary tertiary and working standard the first one that is the primary substandards primary substandards means the basic reference standards in the previous sessions we have discussed the international meter standard and i have told you that the particular international meter standard has been placed in the geneva switzerland that particular standard is known as a primary substandards the primary standards means it is a single piece over the universe suppose by any kind of nature calamities if that particular reference standard has been destroyed then we don't have any kind of reference standard for the measurement so what we have done we have stored that particular primary standard under the proper precise conditions proper atmospheric condition means proper care in 15 or 20 years we are taking it once in a while and then we are removing from the laboratory we are going to measure the particular standard and then we are going to form some sort of replicas from that particular standard and then once again the primary substandard has been placed inside the laboratory for next 10 to 15 years whatever the replica has been generated that particular replicas are known as the secondary substandards we can say that the secondary substandards are exactly same as the primary one but the change is the primary is only a single piece whereas we have number of replicas of that particular primary substandards all the replicas are known as the secondary substandards all over the world all the countries are following that particular secondary substandards as the basic reference for the country suppose in our case india having the secondary substandard in the new delhi laboratories so what we have done we have take taken the replica of that particular primary substandard and we then we have stored that uh, particular replica in the new delhi so whatever the reference or we can say whatever the standard system has been designed inside the india we are going to take the reference as that particular secondary substandards then we have made a number of replicas from that particular secondary substandard as well all these replicas are known as a tertiary substandards and these all replicas are placed inside the prls we can say physical research laboratories and whatever the research work has been done whatever the experiments has been done what we are supposed to do we are simply taking the uh, we are simply taking that particular standard as a basic reference standard and then we are going to take the different different experiment we are going to take the different different readings then and the next one that is the tertiary substandards in the tertiary substandards what we have done we have taken the secondary standard as a basic reference and then we have made a number of replicas of that particular secondary standards it is known as a tertiary standards and for india we have placed that particular tertiary standards in a number of prls we can say physical research laboratories and whatever the experiment whatever the research work has been done whatever the measurement or we can say whatever the dimensions are going to be measured for that particular experiment we are taking the tertiary standard as a basic referral standards and then suppose a company has to manufacture some sort of scales then the company is going for the prl and asking for the uh, providing the tertiary substandard as a referral standard and then taking that particular standard as a reference the company will going to manufacture the scales and whatever the scale has been manufactured those particular scales or we can say those particular standards are known as a working substandards the working substandards are the standards which are available for the local public for the basic measurement inside the industrial or we can say the academic institutions so what we are using we are using the working standards and what we are expecting we are expecting that my working standard having the accuracy of 98 say 99% of accuracy so we can make sure that to maintain the accuracy of 98 99% we have to make sure that the accuracy of the preceding substandards or we can say the tertiary one has the accuracy of approximately 99% or more than that and to make sure that the uh, accuracy of the tertiary substandard we have to make sure that the preceding one means secondary and the primary having the higher accuracy than the subsidiary ones so this is the basic classification of the substandard then the next topic is the line standard and end standard as the name suggests the first one line standard means 
the distance between the two angle lines which is used to measure as a length and it is known as a line or we can say line measurement or line standard suppose take a plain paper draw the two lines and if i have to measure the line between uh, if i have to measure the length between these two lines so what i am supposed to do i will simply take a routine scale and i will place the scale over the lines and i will simple, simply measure the length of the lines then this particular measurement is known as a linear measurement or we can say line measurement the instrument used for this kind of measurement are known as a linear instrument and the standards followed for this particular method is known as a line standards a basic conventional scales are known as a line standard instruments then the next one that is the end standards for the end standard if i have to measure the distance between the two flat parallel surfaces to measure such kind of measurement or we can say to measure such kind of dimensions whatever the procedure has been followed the procedure is known as a end measurement and the standards which are followed for the such kind of measurement are known as a end standards so suppose i have to measure the diameter of the ball then what i am supposed to do i will simply take a vernier caliper place the diam uh, place the ball inside the vernier caliper and I simply i will measure the external dimensions of the ball i can say that the diameter is exactly equal to the linear distance between the two end flat parallel surfaces so what i am going to do i will simply measure that particular distance and then i can say that whatever the distance has been covered the distance is known as the diameter of the ball so this is the end standards now we are going to discuss the last topic of the chapter that is the traceability and calibration now first of all under, let us understand what do you mean by traceability traceability refers to the value of the standards where it can be related to the stated reference through an unbroken chain of comparison with having a proper uncertainty we can make sure that the traceable calibration ratio is 4:1 to now understand what do you, what is the basic concept of the traceability suppose i have to make sure that the working standard which i have available having the accuracy of let's say 96% then i know that i have made that particular working standard from the tertiary one so i have to make sure that the ratio between the errors in the tertiary and the particular uh, working standard is maintained as 4 is to 1 by maintaining such ratio i will decide the maximum acceptable errors in that particular tertiary standard let's say here on the accuracy of the working standard is 96 percent so i can say that the error of four percent is acceptable in the range so to main to measure or we can say to manufacture such kind of uh, working standard i have to manufacture the tertiary standard having the accuracy more than 96 percent let's say 97 98 percent so that we can make sure that by taking the 98 as a reference i can make 96 as a working standards so this kind of chain of comparison within the range of standards is known as a traceability the last one that is the calibration calibration is a basic a process of checking the accuracy of measuring instrument or we can say the dimensions or we can say the tolerance of the gauges by comparing those particular standards or instrument or gauge with the higher accuracy gauges so this particular process is known as a calibration to provide uh, sorry to produce the good quality of the product we need to make the accurate system for the measuring instrument with higher accuracy within the range of limit this particular process is known as a calibration process if i have to design a proper if i have to design a proper dimensioning instrument then what i am supposed to do i will take the same instrument having the higher accuracy and by taking the reference i will make a proper instrument for the dimension measurement so this is the end of the chapter from the next lecture we are going to start a new chapter till then thank you